Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I'm going to be bringing to you guys is a video on how you can prepare for the upcoming December update and make some gold from it as well. So this video has been a long time in the making. I've been making this for about a week now, just kind of compiling all the notes. Then we've got some changes and then some other stuff. So there may be some changes going forward, in which case I will address these as and when the update does launch. But at the time of recording, we've just had updates to the gypsum system, so we've got a new type of gypsum, and also some crafting changes in terms of the attunement potion. So I'm going to run through those with you guys as well here, so that you're kind of on top form for what is currently happening. Now, first things first, we're going to jump into the gypsum system here, which is the brand new way that you can increase your expertise level, which is previously called the high watermark system now expertise as you guys will be able to see in game if i press tab you can see that along the side of each of my slots here you've got a current highest expertise grab so if you've got a high watermark system currently this will then display as like 560 570 whatever you're at but currently on the ptr obviously i've got a default character now with this what you guys will be able to do is of course earn gypsum and then turn those into gypsum orbs which can be used at a gypsum kiln in order to craft a specific item and increase that gear score once per day so for example i could do one chest plate per day one gloves per day and you do get seven daily ones but they have just added in an event only one which means we will have eight daily ones when this does eventually get released here on the live servers for at least for the first few weeks up until the event ends so what i'm going to do is jump into it here first things first you guys will know that the topaz gypsum which is the one where you have to kill level 55 plus hostile creatures around the world actually used to be on a week's cooldown that is now on a one day cooldown the same as the rest of them and the crafting recipe is on screen for you guys there so it's one earth shell tail one salamander slime one lightning beetle one spine fish fins one life moth eyes one soul worm tongue and one blight moth dust so for me i just call these the elemental animals i don't know the correct term for them but that just makes the most sense to me and you need one of each of those every single day if you wanted to get this one and this is probably one of the easiest ones to do it does last for 60 minutes and the drop of the gypsum in these mobs once you have this potion activated has actually been buffed so it should take you not too long at all now obviously stockpile on these if you've got any keep hold of them and if you get any cheap on your server a lot of people are starting to catch on now but if you do get any cheap make sure you buy as many of these up as you possibly can because they are certainly going to sell for a lot once this update does drop so if we look in the gypsum kiln here you guys will be able to see that the topaz one you need 10 of those which means you'll have to get 10 mob drops it's not guaranteed from every mob but like i said there they have been upgraded in terms of the drop rate so you should start to see those fairly regularly and it should not take you the full 60 minutes by any means the next one here is going to be the obsidian gypsum. This one is obtained by open world bosses. So killing these in the elite zones, the named bosses in there or the big boss type guys in there. You need to kill three of those per day to get the gypsum orb drops from that which is the obsidian. And once you've got those three, you can then come and craft it to get your gypsum orb from that one. The next one here is the ruby gypsum and this one is from completing outpost rush matches. As you can see, you need two of those. So you'll have to do two outpost rush games a day in order to get these and you do get those for each game that you play is a definite guaranteed drop whether you win or lose next one here is the amethyst gypsum this one is dropped from the corruption breaches so once you clear a breach you get the breach cash they are involved in those so what you will need to do is clear at least seven of these per day in order to get your gypsum all for this one and then with the brand new trade skill aptitude system which you guys will see if i go into the trade skills tab here all of the ones in the PTR are level 200, and as you guys can see, there is the markers there on each of these levels. So, for example, if we hover over the engineering level here, you can see where the start is, which is right at the top here. Then once you get to the first marker here, it says after reaching the maximum level, you can continue to earn experience and gain aptitude levels. At each marked point, you will earn a reward box. Boxes earned later in each level offer greater rewards. So you'll see there's one, two, and the third one is back up to the top. So it'll be 200 plus one. 
one plus two plus three etc 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 as you level up now obviously that is one way that you can get some crafting recipes crafting mods materials and of course you do earn the emerald gypsum from this which you just need to get one of per day in order to be able to do this so this can become from any of these three caches and yeah once you get one of those then you can craft that into a gypsum orb now onto the ones that actually are going to basically be something that you can prepare for and that is actually going to be both the arena ones so for these ones we are looking at the citrine gypsum here this one is obtained by going into the arena killing the boss and completing the arena now the reason we can prepare for this one is of course by getting those arena tuning old materials readily available in your bank and of course crafting them if you are able to because Obviously, you've got your daily lockout on those. The more of them you have in advance ready to go, the better it's going to be in order to get these for yourself. And this is going to be something a few people have caught on to, a few people haven't. So if you are able to get any of those material components for the crafting of the tuning orbs, even if you are still leveling up your stone cutting at this current time, you do want to be getting ahead of that. And I'll touch on it in a moment, but certainly buy up any cheap materials that you see as it's going to be vitally, vitally important. The next one here is going to be this Sapphire Gypsum. Now, this one is obtained by going into Garden of Genesis or Lazarus Instrumentality and killing the final boss. So essentially completing the dungeon once per day will award you with a Sapphire Gypsum. Now on top of this in both of the expeditions and the arena bosses when you kill these bosses they give a guaranteed expertise bump. So you're essentially doubling your bump from this. You get one guaranteed from the orb that you'll craft with the Gypsum you get and then one guaranteed from the boss drops themselves. Also in the expeditions you have a guaranteed timeless shard drop which if you guys don't know about this new system is something where you can get a certain item it will be a guaranteed way that the item looks and then you can choose both the perk and the attribute that you want on it so you can essentially make these very very good if you're using heavy armor you get a heavy drop perfect if not that's the element of luck you've got so you can kind of get things that you're not going to be using but of course if you do manage to get say for example a fire staff as a fire staff user you can of course choose your perk and the attributes that you want to put on that to make it be the best it can possibly be for you which is really really good also with the expeditions which is why these are one of the best things in the upcoming update you can get the elite chest in there which of course have a chance to bump your expertise up and of course have a chance to drop the timeless shards much like the ones in the elite zones do the elite chests there but because you can do all of this inside the expedition plus the other stuff as you guys will imagine, the best way you can prepare for this update is going to be by getting the materials to craft those keys. Now, it's going to be vitally important to run the corruption breaches for the corrupted silver, chunks, etc. And of course, getting all of the external materials, buying any cheap ones you see, even if you can't use them. Because if nothing else, you can sell them once this update drops for a lot more cash. If you are able to get your hands on these and craft them because of your daily lockouts, it's going to be vitally important to do this ahead of time. And if you are not yet 200 stone cut, get yourself up get grinding the stone cutting it's fairly easy to do just craft a load of stone and cut it down it's going to be super super useful because basically it's going to be one of the most essential ways to get some of your gypsum get your expertise bumps get your timeless shards etc 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 which is going to mean you're either going to be in high high demand for running these dungeons with or of course you can provide yourself with these gypsum orbs per day along with all the rest of the stuff and you can potentially do this daily if you get the materials that you need so you certainly want to be getting that up that would be my number Number one priority before this update drops, which we are expecting to be around the 14th of December at this point. Yesterday, at the time of recording, we had the server updates, or this morning, I should say. So then, we now are expecting that to go live around the 14th, as that's when the event is due to start with the Winter Convergence. So you've got a couple of days there to try and max this out. I would prioritise doing that. It's going to be super, super useful. And that is going to be alongside the crafting skills, which we'll get onto in just a moment. Now, with the crafting side of things, as well as it being absolutely vital to get as many of the skills as you can up to that 200 level so that you can be acquiring these caches as you progress through and for any of you that are currently 200 in any of the given skills I would certainly recommend saving your crafting resources for when this update does drop because it is going to get you a big net bonus for actually crafting continuously especially those guys that are like 200 weaponsmithing, engineering, armoring, dual crafting, arcana etc where you're crafting weapons, armors and stuff like that. Once you actually get people to do that for you it's going to be beneficial for yourself as well because you're going to earn progress towards those caches and of course like I said there we can see those timeless shards coming in where you can guarantee a perk and an attribute 
So I would certainly be waiting to the update if it's me. Um, I've been saving all of my materials up for this update to drop so that we can get the progress and of course the brand new stuff which is going to be super, super useful. Now, one really, really vital thing with this update is going to be the addition of the conversion stuff within um, the actual refining station. So if we look in the smelter here, for example, you can see that there is the ability to now craft cinnabar as well as Asmodium, which has always been there, and Tolvium. Now, these are your kind of legendary rare drop resources from Oracalcum Veins, and these are needed in the creation of Asmodium, which, of course, is the best metal resource, if you like, in the game, and it does cost Tolvium and Cinnabar in order to craft it. Now, one thing you will note from this is these also have an egg timer next to them and are currently limited to 10 per day, but, as you will see, both of them do cost Oracalcum ore, and it's 250 per time, so times that by 10 per day you're looking at 2500 to max out both and if you want to max out both the tolium and the cinnabar in the same day you're going to need 5000 oracalcum ore per day which is a lot now on top of that what you will notice is that the asmodium is also a daily lockout and as well as needing both one tolium and one cinnabar per which means to get all 10 craft in a day you would need to do 5000 ore if you don't get any of this by mining naturally you also need five oracalcum ingots now obviously that's another reason to have the oracalcum ore but on the side note of this these can now be crafted with of course the regular star metal but also with platinum ingots so if there's any cheap oracalcum ore on your server any cheap oracalcum ingots of course for the asmodium daily cooldowns but mainly the ore is going to be the most important thing to buy and of course if there's any cheap platinum or platinum ore and subsequently gold then to smelt that up on your server then I would certainly certainly recommend stockpiling it it's something that not a lot of people have caught on to yet so I've managed to buy quite a lot of cheap platinum still for 0.01 which is ridiculous. I picked up a load of that and I should be set to craft as much Oracalcum ingots as I need, providing I go out and get the ore part of it, which is going to be, you know, grinding itself. But of course, you can get the chance to get Tolvium and Cinnabar from that as well. And this is the same for each of the refining tables. So certainly stock up on your Oracalcum ore if you haven't done so already and there's still some cheap stuff on your server. It's going to be vitally, vitally important. Going over to the wood shop then, this one is going to be barb vine and also wild wood that you can craft. Iron wood is what is required for this. And again, it is 250 and for your glittering ebony again you're locked out at 10 for each of these so you would need a total of 5,000 iron wood if you do want to craft all 10 of these per day plus getting your actual uh, glittering ebony planks so it's quite a lot it's quite a lot of materials that you're going to need so obviously again when you are chopping down the ironwood trees you do have a chance to get barb vine and wild wood just by doing that so this is a good thing because it means you're hopefully not going to need to craft all of them every day but if there is any cheap ironwood on your server do buy it up if you can farm it do the reason for this is because of course right now weird wood planks the best way to get this was by farming those kind of elemental dog things that you could chop up with the axe or the stags and they would give you weird wood as well as a ton of login xp right now you are unable to do this and still in the ptr have tested to see whether it's back you can't you can't still mine these so essentially the only weird wood coming into every server is going to be from the weird wood trees which is of course a lot slower than the dogs were and gives less xp so people are less inclined to do it that being said if you do want to do it and you do want to make some money weird wood or making it into the weird wood planks is going to sell for a tremendous amount particularly when this update comes out of course because that means you can start to craft these iron wood planks which you do need for glittering ebony and of course with that then it levels you up to get the iron wood so if you are able to gather iron wood you're going to make an absolute mint of doing that because a lot of people are just going to try and buy it so if you can get yours up there you are going to make a good bit of money so either buy it up if it's cheap on your server alongside of course any weird wood or weird wood planks but of course if you can farm it yourself as well or you're close to being able to farm it i would recommend grinding this up before the update because again you are going to make a huge amount of profit from this when this does launch tracking into the stone cutting then and whilst this doesn't have any particularly new upgrades like the other ones where you can transmit the materials the raw materials tier 5 mats into an actual component legendary component what it does do is illustrate the importance of this particularly the lazarus one costs level 150 stone cutting but if you have a look on here the rune stones which you need 10 of these actually do require level 200 if we scroll right back up to the top and these again are 10 per day that you can craft so you will need to be getting on top of these they do require lodestone it can be any type of lodestone but you do need one of those per craft so of course that'll be 10 per day and of course you will need obsidian void stone 
lodestone, which if you look on the recipe here, again requires lodestone, lodestone the actual block itself, as well as the elemental ones, and then you will need lodestone bricks, which is the previous tier, etc. So you will need to graft this up, and it is going to be something where if you are leveling up your stone cutting for this update, you do want to keep hold of all of these stone bricks, lodestone bricks, and obsidian void stone that you get, because you will need them for crafting the keys. Now obviously on top of that, you can see the materials that are required here, so you will need the corrupted lodestones, which is the highest tier, which requires two corrupted crystals, three corrupted shards, etc. Obviously, if you do get lucky and get these corrupted crystals as a drop, it does dramatically cut down the time, but they are very, very rare. On top of that, you'll need the Asmodium Chisel. This comes from the faction vendor shop, so you can go in there and use the tokens from your faction and, of course, a bit of gold to buy these. And then the Lazarus Core, which is something craftable at level 150 and requires all of the following. So an Elemental Heart. This one up here is 50 Water, 50 Earth, 50 Fire and 50 Air Motes. It also requires an Undying Heart, which is this one here, which is 10 Death, 10 Life, and 10 Soul Quintessences, as well as 10 Blight Seeds. You also then need 3 Glowing Spores and 3 Earth Totems. So... As you guys can see, it's a lot of materials. It's very unlikely that people are going to be doing these daily unless you stockpile some up front. But these are going to be really, really good. So if you can get the glowing spores on the earth totems for cheap on your server, certainly do it. Of course, looking at the Undying Heart, if there's any cheap quintessences or blight seeds, also buy those. And then the Elemental Heart, which of course you need each of the moats for. So cheap moats, again, if you wanted to make cash out of this, selling moats, selling any of the components to obviously the glowing spores, the earth totems and also the quintessences and blight seeds here all of that good stuff is going to be great looking at the genesis core you need those corrupted runes and molten runes on top of three elemental and three eternal hearts which if we look at these it's all of the moats that you're going to need so 50 of each times three 150 of each moat per day if you wanted to craft these so again if you are a farmer a gatherer you want to make some money or you want to flip some money buying or gathering moats that are cheap or that you've gathered yourself obviously to sell after this patch is going to be a huge huge profit maker so do not sleep on that now also looking down here like i said at those arena keys for exactly the same reason if we look at something like the protectors tuning orb you're going to need star metal chisels fine we can get those rune stones we can make those energy cores and glowing swamp moss so glowing swamp moss is going to be the component there this one you're going to need firefox and this one you're going to need fancy shells so if you've got any of those Make sure you keep hold of them or buy any cheap ones. Again, you'll be able to sell for a profit or use them very, very actively after the update. So if we have a look at the energy cores, you guys will be able to see that it costs an elemental and an eternal heart, which of course is the 50 moats of each. And you do need one of those per orb that you do. So of course, if you're doing one of those per day, you will still need 50 of each moats to do the arenas as well. So basically, moats are going to be huge, huge profit potential for this next update when people realize the value of the arenas and, of course, the Expedition Keys. Now, going back onto the topic of the Timeless Shards, which will also be coming to New World with the brand new update. As you guys can see here, I've just picked up a random piece of the Outfitting Station gear, and it requires 10 Spectral Dust. Now, when these new Timeless Shards come, because they allow you to pick the attribute that you want, it actually requires 10 of the Craft Mods that are respective of that attribute. So, for example, you will need 10 Iron Battle Medals if you want to create something with a strength attribute and then of course you can just determine the perk as normal there as you would in anything else that you craft so you are going to need to stockpile these crafting mods a lot of servers have seen these go through the roof since this was announced on the forums so do make sure that you take advantage of any cheap attribute craft mods that you do see pick those up and of course pick up any cheap perk ones that you're going to want to put on gear as well because right now they may be cheap as it's hard to determine some people would rather go for an attribute etc but once this comes out they're going to be very very useful so make sure you take advantage of that and make sure you are stocking up on any cheap crafting mods particularly things like constitution which are going to be globally across the board everyone's going to want to have those so making sure you have a stockpile of any of those keep hold of any you've got and buy up any cheap ones because they are either going to sell or going to be useful to use now along with this what you guys will notice is of course once you get to level 150 in a respective refining skill you unlock the tier 5 material so on the tannery here it is infused leather. This is really really huge because what it does mean is that when people are going to make these timeless shards they're going to require infused leather, infused silk, or calcum ingots etc 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 so making sure that you have basically any materials that are going to be used in those timeless shards they are going to be super super important and it is going to be those tier 5 ones 
But equally, if you've got the tier 4 ones or the refining reagents, those are also going to sell for a lot of money once this update comes out. So if you're not quite up to those top tier refining levels yet, but you have managed to get the tier 4 ones, you will still make a lot of money. You are going to make money off pretty much any of these because a lot of people are going to be too lazy to gather them and are just going to want to buy them when they do get these shards. Meaning that if you can craft the tier 5 ones, you're going to be on big whack. Any refining reagents, buy any cheap ones. Keep hold of any you get because, again, people are going to want to just try and buy the tier 4 ones and refine it up to tier 5 as often that's a cheaper alternative so that will be something that they're going to be hammering in on as well because when they get hands on with these timeless shards that is what is required to make them it's the tier 5 materials so they're going to either have to buy those or make those meaning that there's many many opportunities for profit for any of you guys that are refining guys to make some big big cash there now what i would recommend with these raw mats obviously i wouldn't recommend buying or stockpiling any of these unless they are super super cheap and you have the room in your storage because we're still a few days out from the update but any that you do gather any that you currently have definitely keep a hold of as they are going to be super useful to you once this update does drop and on a side note to this as well obviously with the changes to the crafting system we saw it be the most beneficial to make the highest tier that you possibly can once you do reach that tier so for example once you hit 150 your best way to level up your tannery or your lever working skill is going to be to craft the infused lever so obviously those materials will skyrocket probably in the next couple of days before the update but certainly once this drops and the trade skill aptitude system becomes global knowledge then everybody will want to be leveling those up making things like iron hide layered leather and of course the refined reagents again absolutely minted in terms of profitability so those of you that are sleeping on runs those of you that run past chests in the open world because you don't want to loot them they're in a low level area if you do look at this you can actually use the tier 3 tannin the tier 4 rested tannin and of course the tier 5 age tannin but all of it is going to be worth it and all of it is going to be expensive so my advice to you would be loot every single chest you see in the world get as many of these reagents stockpiled because these are something worth stockpiling they're going to sell for an extremely large amount compared to now they're going to also be in high demand and low resource and of course you're probably going to want to use them yourself to level up your crafting skills or craft things in the future for whatever you want to make so these are going to be super super good to stock up on things like iron hide layered leather just try and make sure that you get there before the update try and level up the most you can because they are going to be exceedingly expensive when people clock on to getting those caches and just how good those caches actually are so then you're going to have a lot of competition they're going to be in super high demand and if you are a farmer you're someone who likes going out and gathering you're going to be in huge huge amounts of money after this update does drop for that exact reason finally here then i want to touch on crafted gear as that has been something that has been said to be completely exempt from the downscaling system which we may see implemented at the end of january i say may see because they keep changing their opinion on it what they think about it i think they are going to downscale items somewhat it kind of meets in the middle between your expertise level and the item gear score so obviously if you guys want to read that it is in the full patch notes on the forums but essentially what you need to know from this video in terms of making profit and being ahead of the curve for the update is that anything you craft will be exempt from that and that includes anything you craft and sell to another player when that player buys it if it is a crafted item it is exempt from downscaling so that means if you have got level 200 in anything particularly you know the ones where you can craft weapons armor so right here i'm on the arcana table we're looking at fire staff here for example so if you do get a really nice roll on something like an oracalcum fire staff or an oracalcum life staff maybe you get a 600 roll with good perks and good attributes as well it's going to be worth a tremendous amount after this update and probably in the days running up to it because people are starting to clock on to that it's not going to be affected by gear scores so if you can craft it for yourself and for your guild mates or company mates it's going to make a massive difference it's particularly in pvp and wars but also in pve in any farming environments that you do for all of these materials we now need it's going to be crucial to have people who can craft these 600 gear score stuff or at least the 590 pluses until you get 600 rolls because they are going to be unaffected also means people who've crafted things like void armor you don't need to worry because again that's going to be kept safe beast hunter wraps and shade walker stuff again all safe so just bear in mind it is only going to be drops that you get so other players get or yourself get from mobs that are maybe a higher gear score maybe you've bought it off the trading post and it's a 590 plus piece of gear but you're 
expertise level is only 520. It will then be scaled to the middle if it's a mob drop. Everything else like crafted items and quest items are now going to stay at the level they were actually at. So it means mostly you're going to be unaffected. But crafters, you guys are going to be in super high demand if you have got the ability to roll those 590s and 600 gear score weapons and armors. Because everybody is going to want to get hands on with those because they do not drop. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful in terms of how you can prepare for the upcoming update. And how you can actually make some gold by preparing as well like I said priority skill wise there stone cutting you really want to get it up and any of your refining ones that you can get up are past that 150 level so that you can craft the tier 5 mats they're going to be in super high demand and also of course any crafting skill that you can get up to 200 is going to be really really good or any trade skill in general because of the trade skill aptitude system with the gypsum system you need to make sure that you're on top of those particularly the materials for the attunement potions those are going to be something which people have maybe not bought straight away because it was initially 5 per of each elemental animal and that was once per week so maybe people hold it back on that now it's one per every single day that means it's going to be seven per week and they're going to be in much higher demand so make sure you stockpile in those if you can or collecting them or whatever you want to do there but hopefully you guys can get ahead of the curve with this video make sure you're on top of your game when this update does drop and hopefully you know be prepared and ready to make some big big profits once we do get the update which like i said there is rumored to be the 14th as that is when the christmas event goes live so hopefully you guys have enjoyed if you have please do make sure to drop a like on today's videos it really really does help me and my content here on the channel if you are new to the channel you want to see more new world content i cover absolutely everything to do with new world here on the channel so i'd love it if you could click the subscribe button down below and help support me as a creator here i'd love to have you as part of my channel community and i do upload every single day so having you here for that would be amazing other than that guys as always thank you very much for your time thank you for watching and i'll catch you tomorrow on the next one take care and peace